It's lights out and away we go. It's a good start for the Ferrari in the middle there. Is that Beck? Oh, it's Beck. He's jumped the Aston Martins already. Um, but for him, and he's going down the inside. Oh, and that's a Med Bull going off in the back there. Uh, not sure who he's had contact with. There's a yellow flag out, but a lot of drivers still going. And uh, that is still Beck trying to get round the outside of Kristoff. I would say he's not had a lot of experience in the uh, in the conditions. And Beck, what a start. What a start. I think he was going to have a P7 or P8, and he's jumped to P3 immediately. Brilliant driving. Um, there's a couple of yellow flags a bit further back. Driving number 10. Uh, it's another debut driver. That's caught. Not having a bad time at all. So whilst we're in the wet conditions, I don't think we'll see a lot of passes at the moment because there's no DRS activated yet. Obviously, it deactivated while the rain is on. Uh, so when that rain ends, as Darvo gets the fastest lap of the race at 119.476 and extending his lead, he is driving off into the sunset with this. Uh, Givo makes a pass into P10. Oh, he's had a terrible start, to be honest. Not, I mean, I thought he would because of the... Um, Tell him so that's Hodgson already uh, getting lapped. So he's had a terrible time as well. Reward and Walters now as he's looking to make a move on Pavey. He looks like he's got the um, got the traction. Oh, he's actually backed up the throttle there. He's so much faster than Pavey that he's having to lift off the throttle and just sit behind for an overtaken opportunity. As a uh, is that Beck that's gone off and Beck and Christoph having a battle now. They're both going side by side around uh, turn eight. Oh, sorry, turn 10. And that is Christoph back up into P2. But Beck's going to come right back at him on the next straight. This is the... <laughs> looks like the best position they're going to be able to get because the rival's so far up there. And there's Morgan just watching all this happen right in front of him. Looking to pick up any scraps. They're still going side by side around turn 13. And now around this corner. Got to be careful on throttle here. Oof. It looks like Christoph gets a better run out of the corner. Now Morgan looking to go for the move on Beck. And Beck goes back into the slipstream of Christoph. But no moves made. No moves made. Everyone is comfortable. We're just sitting where they are at the moment. Obviously, Rowley makes a move on Cross. So we've actually got three drivers out now. We've got Dunbar, Hodson, and Hayes all out of the race. Obviously, Hayes was having uh, connectivity issues, um, and Hodson and Dunbar just... I don't think they were ready for the wet, to be fair. It's a disappointing day for the RAC. Oh, as we go on board with Beck! And the commentator's curse, I guess it was, as right as we went on board of him, he's had a spin. So I've had such a good start as well. As Vernon's are moved up into P5. And Greedo on P4. So it's all about, you know, just staying consistent, not spinning. Getting up there. I don't know where Beck's gone. Oh, no, sorry, Beck. Yeah, sorry, Beck had that spin. And that, oh, someone that snuck up there, you know, is, uh, is Sharp uh, for the RLC. So even though they don't have their main man, Hamilton, uh, Sharp is uh, willing to fill the boots. Looking to get a podium on board. But he's got Greeno attacking him now. But just about the DRS, obviously, it's a hard track to overtake. But then Sharp goes wide. Is Greeno going to go down the inside? It looks like he is. And he hasn't got that move done. Oh, no, Sharp's ready to come back at him. And it goes side by side into turn three. And that Sharp regained the position. I feel like Greeno should have had that after he went wide. But Sharp was able to recover. Got on board with Vernon, who's managed to go from, I think, P12 to P5. So he's, uh, he's had a good race. Uh, um, always does. He's always a very consistent driver. Just, you know, if he can just get it a bit better in quality, you can start a bit higher and maybe look at getting uh, into those podium positions. I mean, he's close to a podium position now, to be honest. I mean, just only two cars in front of him. But it'll be all about when the driver's box for drives. Greeno's close. He's very close. 
we'll just go back through the order so far currently we've got darville in p1 with the fastest lap as well i think he's running away with this race christoph in p2 um about 10 seconds down the way then it's sharp in pc uh, p3 with greeno uh, vernon and morgan all in tow so they're all close enough um uh, to get their first podiums of the intercore at least this season uh for Sharp, if you'd get it on his debut, that would be fantastic. Um, as we see, Beck is in the pits. What tyres are you putting on? That's the first driver to put on a dry compound. The hard tyres are going on. This should be crucial now. We'll have to watch uh, his time to get the drivers. And that's uh, hacking in as well. Is this for drives or is this for a new wing? It, it looks like that's a soft compound. Soft compound is a great race tyre, especially not around here because the tyres get so hot. But... Uh, it could work. I, I've, I've seen it work in the past. We'll go back on board with this fight. Greeno still behind Sharp. But look how dry it is now. We see oh, Vernon almost bottles it. Um, I think, yeah, Morgan's going to have that place, but he saved it, so he didn't lose uh, anything other than one position. He could have gone into a right spin, and he would have lost a lot more places there. I think it's just the track drying up. Just trying to find the bite on that traction point. And that's Darville. Darville's box as well for dries. So that everyone should be boxing for dries now. Yeah, Kristoff's in as well. But Sharp stays out. Sharp stays out crucially. And so does Greedo. Oh, I don't know if that's the correct decision. It looks very dry out there. Very dry indeed. And every other driver, I think, is boxing. At the moment, yeah, Rowley's in as well. It's just these two drivers staying out, and I feel like it's it's going to drop them right back. See, Darvel's put on the mediums. Oh, and that's oh, that sharp. Oh, my word. I don't know what happened there. That looked like a wheel disconnection or something. And if this calls a safety car out, this could be massive. Yeah, safety car's deployed for that. I, I don't know what happened. It looked like he was just going around the corner and he just shot off. So Sharp, after having such a good start to the race, is out of this session. That's our fourth retirement of the session. Um... Uh, safety car's not coming yet. Obviously, can't. Start accelerating until that safety car is in the pit lane. Kristoff uh, looks like he wants to be right on the back of him. And off they go. Darville up there. Oh, it looks like Gibbo's going to go for a move. No. Did look like he was close for a second. Oh, that's Beck trying to go around the outside of uh, Rosa. Bit of wheel bumping, and it's left him vulnerable to the med bull of Pavey and he able he's able to defend from Pavey and keep hold of that position Rowley moves up to P7 I think he was the one attacking there so you see Rowley just got stewards warning as well uh, possibly for track limits no time penalties as of yet for anybody Obviously, it's going to be uh, another two laps before DRS is activated. The Gibbo getting closer and closer to Vernon. I want to see Hacken sort of come through the uh, field on those softs, to be honest. Everyone else on the, either the hard or mediums. I don't know if the hards will get to the end. I don't think the mediums or softs will. Will the hards? I'm not sure. So maybe... Um, from Beck, Corey, um, and Walters, they're all going for the uh, one-stop strategy. As Darvo just set the fastest lap of the race. He's got a big, big lead. So it looks like he's absolutely rinsed his ERS. Go on board with Vernon, the AGC driver. He's on the back of Beck at the moment. He's obviously on the harder compound, so that's probably why... Um, he's struggling just a tiny bit but once again he is the highest of the one stoppers I think he is trying to do a one stop on those on that hard compound so yeah red flash and light means he's got the ERS Vernon with the ERS and the DRS and he gets pushed all the way to the uh, wall there 
very Michael Schumacher Barrichello esque. Um, is he going to hold it down the inside? Obviously, that outside, you can get much better traction. They're going to go side by side at that turn three and turn four. But Beck, you just defends enough and manages to keep Vernon behind him. Good racing from both drivers there. on board with a man who looks like his podium streak is coming to an end you know what? i'm just gonna go as far as say his podium streak has come to an end i'm willing to say that he's currently down in pe14 with 17 laps left to go we're just over the halfway point in this race now ladies and gentlemen and now he's gonna go down the inside oh a little bit of contact being made there between uh uh what was in gibbo and a little bit of contact has turned into a bit more than that uh just seemed like what was didn't see gibbo was down on his inside Back on board with Vernon. We're assuming it's going to go for another go on Beck at some point. Doesn't look like it's going to be this lap. A bit far behind, but still in that DRS zone. We'll go on board, we'll go on board with Darwin for a bit because he's, you know, he's got the fastest lap. I think he, uh, he deserves that much, even though he's cruising at this point to get his uh, second win. He's just having a good drive as long as he doesn't like spin and absolutely smack into a wall where he has to box for his front wing. He should be all right. I'm not trying to jinx it. <laughs> but, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's not looked like a good day for the RLC, uh, which is, you know, about 15 laps from what I said previously. Uh, as 15 laps ago, I said it is a good day for the RLC, but currently they've got one driver out and one driver out of the points. The Corey's picked up 10 seconds of penalties. I'm not sure uh, when he's done that. But uh, it's not going to help him come to the end of this race. There's another fast lap of the race by Darville. He, 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 there's no stopping him. He's gone. Um, and that is... Who, who's that boxing? That's uh, Christoph. Christofferson is boxing. What tyres are you putting on? It's going to be the hard compound, right? Oh, it's another set of mediums. Obviously, because they started on interns, they only have to use the uh, one compound. And that's a five-second time penalty for Bobby Beck for speeding into the pit lane. Obviously, it's like a 50-mile-per-hour uh, speed limit here, or it's 37. I can't remember off the top of my head. Either way, he was going faster than that. Um, and he's given a five-second penalty for it, which is not great. Be added to his time at the end of the race, unless he does another pit stop and serves it. So those hards look like they're not going to get to the end. Um, as it'll the highest driver. I reckon Corey will try and push those hards to the end. I don't think they'll get to the end, though. Currently sitting P7, but I think there's still another stop. That's an Alfa Romeo going slowly. Oh, it's a different Alfa Romeo. Different Alfa Romeo. It was Darvel for a second. <laughs> and that is, that's Darvel boxing now. So boxing, we have to see where, uh, where it comes out in relation to Kristoff. I think He's going to be a bit of the road. Rowley stays out. I'm not sure if he's going to try and get these mediums to go another 10 laps. I don't think that's possible. And I've got soft tyres Darvel's whacked on. Good luck, guys. I don't think uh, you're going to be able to catch him. And that's Vernon who's going to get by. So Darvel could get caught up in traffic, which uh, I think Christofferson will be hoping for. As Morgan does another fastest lap of the race and is now very close to um, Christoph. He's a bit down the way. Um, that's crossed by Darvel. Now Darvel's tyre is going to be a little bit cold. Obviously very quick to get those uh, soft tyres up to temperature. There's no tyre blankets anymore. So um, when they get brought out, they are brought out stone cold. He's coming up to the back of Vernon. I don't know if Vernon's going to stay out. If he does, I'm sure it's going to hold up uh, on Darvel track a bit. at the moment. Gibbo has made his way back into the points. 
Um, with the fastest lap point as well. I'm sure Diver will try and take that off him though. Is he close enough this time? It's four tenths, just not getting a good enough exit. It looks like he's, he's pushing, he's going to go for it this time. Lap 35 out of 36, going to go down the inside. Corey leaves the space. Nothing yet. Oh, Corey's got no ERS though. His light is flashing. Palm's got a little bit, almost good to the back of Corey there. Two laps left to go. Darvel P1, Morgan P2. While this is going on, Rowley's just getting ever so closer. With two laps left to go, I don't... I don't think he, Rowley can catch him, but I don't know how much slower Corey's going. To give over his catch up to Vernon. I mean, he's within DRS of Vernon. He's got DRS. This is possibly the last overtaken opportunity for Carbon to get onto the podium. Even he's got a three second time penalty, so does Rowley. Not having a great exit. Agibo has got past uh, Vernon. And that's Carbon absolutely lunging it down the inside. They go side by side now. And it looks like Carbon is just ahead, but he hasn't got the move completely done yet. And now he has. So you got to go on board with uh, with Darville. We haven't had to do that much <laughs> over the second half of this race. Um, but the UOTC driver is going to get his second win of the Intercore Championship. And I believe it's going to shoot him to the top of the driver standings as well. So massive congratulations, a massive round of applause for Darville for securing his second win Intercore Championship and is now the championship leader. Uh also, massive congratulations to Morgan, the Remy driver, getting his first podium. Um, and that's the first podium for the Remy. Not only his first podium. So, uh, a brilliant drive, obviously, the Remy. Harnessing their blokes well. Uh, Rally jumps up, up to P4 after Corey's 10 second time penalty. Um, so, and Hacken jumps Corey as well. Obviously, that 10 second time penalty moving him from uh, P4 down to P6. Uh, cross comes across the line in P7, Beck P8. But after his speeding penalty, Gibbo jumps into P, <laughs> takes P8 with the fastest lap point as well. So recovering a, a few points for the uh, RLC there um, after a couple of spins. Beck P9, Vernon P10 gets a point for the AGC. Um, a Pavey P11, um, Court P12, Walters P13. And that is it. Round three of the Intercore Championship is done. Now it's done. We have another race in two weeks' time.